uh, and it's a shame that that film was treated more like a television film than it was as a you know as, as a theatrical release because it really getting back to what you to what you said about Hitchhike there I've always felt that if you if if there's an honesty among the the uh, the actors you know among the repertory then that's what projects onto the screen um, yes you can have good cinematography and great cinematography but that's not going to make it that's not going to spoil the film it's not going to make the difference in terms of what you see happening on, on on the screen and that and hitch well hitchhike for me is maybe my favorite of all um, although I do like uh, the, the last one that I made you know smash cut but um, no the, 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 we just loved each other Corinne and myself and Franco we get in the car during the day and for eight hours we just riff and we just go back and forth and the, you know and, 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 and that's what came out and um, and, and there again we're, we're, we're probing each other so, probing each other's so, you know psychosis and, and, and neurosis the, 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 that's what you see the thing that I love most about Hitchhike is that it is completely against the grain of expectation in the sense that, you know, on, on the back of something like Last House on, on the left, we expect you to terrorise Franco Nero. And actually, you know, in another world, you guys would have been best friends. You know, forget about Corinne for a moment. You guys bonded in that movie and it was almost a surprise, you know, that, um, that Franco allowed you to get off at the end of it. Um, I guess they, I where we're they, coming from is we. I, I kind of read it as a bit of a, it's on the road you know it's Jack Kerouac and, and there you are you're Dean Moriarty in that movie and uh, right, Franco exactly. Nero's Hell Paradise and Moriarty you know there's two faces to Moriarty too that's why people love him um, I think Corinne completely um, is the glue of that movie you know it doesn't exist without that female character who's used How can it. you not want to jump all over Corinne Ferre <laughs> 24-7? I mean, you just, you could see it in my eyes, you could see it in his eyes. We, we, you, you know, we, we could, I mean, there was a competition going on without a competition, if you know what I'm saying. It was just, she, I, she's probably, if not the most beautiful woman in, that I've ever, ever, ever had the pleasure of, 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 of working with or being with or getting to know, certainly in the top five. She's a fantastic actress and she's, you know, she, we watched the documentary Devil Thumbs a Ride and she's very complimentary of, of your way around her as, a, a, as an actress where I think that you know, she was slightly um, afraid of Franco Nero at the beginning, which is ironic given the, the text within that film. Well, Franco always, Franco was a, you know, he was a big come on. Always, always has been, you know. I mean, I, I, and I don't, I say that with love, but he, you know, he's a, he, he's a seducer. He gets right, he gets right to the nitty gritty. <laughs> he's got, he's got that Italian macho, you know, machismo going for him, and you know, so. Um, and I grew up, I grew up as a. I, I grew up on Long Island in a wealthy family, and you, you just, you know, you did it differently. You did it differently. You didn't, you didn't jump all over. Well, anyway, that's, that's, that's a whole other story. And Pasquale was there. I mean, you know, that's the biggest loss of all, is the fact that we lost Pasquale first to the company. Italy. I mean, he, he, would have, he would have been a major, major, major player, uh, in, in, you know, in, in filmmaking if he hadn't died at such a young age. Genius. Absolute genius. And, and very much a, 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 a film writer as much as a filmmaker. Oh, brilliant. Oh, it, it, probably, yes. Yeah. How did you really? get to meet... He was that, a professor. How did you get to meet Ruggiero Diodato? I mean, this is a guy that you've worked with on a number of occasions, both on TV and film. Um, I got a call from, from, from Medusa, who were producing a film with, uh, with him. From one of the the guys that was distributing, his name was Sesto Cifalo, and I had met him previous to that. Um, I think at either Cannes or at the American Film Market. Um, probably was Cannes because I was working at the time for Atlas International. You know, you know, trying to. <laughs> I was doing dubbing and I was going and being there. <laughs> 